Big Judy Van Gaat past that 40 second hold. Play director Ty Huntington telling the team we are go for launch. So 20 seconds to go. Let's listen in. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. seconds into flight we are feeling the rumble we are seeing 33 out of 33 raptor engines ignited on the super heavy booster booster and ship avionics power and telemetry nominal acquisition of signal corpus christi all right counting down now we're going to be coming up right at around the three minute mark on that hot staging maneuver again we'll see the Booster engines start to shut down. You'll see all but three lights go out in the middle. And then we'll see the engines ignite on ship, pushing it away. And that will start carrying the ship into space. Booster will start to do its flip and then move into the boost back burn, setting it up for eventual splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Hot staging confirmed. Boosters now making its way signal. back. Yeah. Seeing six engines ignited on ship. Kate, we got a Starship on its way to space and a booster on the way back to the Gulf. Oh man, uh, I need a moment to pick my jaw up from the floor because these views are just stunning. Uh, these are live views from Starship. Uh, first stage is currently performing. Ship avionics, power and telemetry nominal. Good there, news informing us that the second stage or the ship, everything looking good, nominal there. First stage is currently performing the boost back burn, expecting that to last about one minute. That boost good back burn, uh, that boost back burn propels the booster back towards the coast, taking it to a landing in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we're uh, only using the super heavy boosters, 13 center engines from here on out. Uh, as whenever they relight, you'll be able to see that in the left bottom corner. Uh, those are the ones that can gimbal. In other words, they move and change direction uh, in order to change the thrust to steer the first stage back to Earth. We're ab about 30 seconds away, uh, oh, just under 30 oh, seconds oh, away oh, from the start of the boost back burn. Uh, excuse me, the landing burn on the booster. You can see the grid fins are rotating. Those hypersonic grid fins are guiding us through the atmosphere back towards our splashdown site. Again, we're going for a hard, uh, for a splashdown, a soft splashdown. So for landing burn, we're gonna expect to see the 13 center engines light rapidly bring down the booster's velocity. And then just the three, in the center for splashdown. Let's see if that'll work. We're getting a few, a few engines. And acquisition of signal. Let's we'll see if we can get some other video of that. Now, uh, this is a test objective today. It is still something that we're attempting to learn. Now that view that we just had moments ago was a live shot of Star Command. There you see it again. This is uh, our mission control center at Starbase uh, where vehicle operators are standing by. Now the next milestone coming up uh, is in less than a minute. Uh, at that point, ship will, or I'm sorry, it actually it already has. Um, engine cut off. There we go. <laughs> Six Raptor 
reactor engines have successfully shut down. We heard a call out for nominal orbital insertion, which is incredible. Look at these views, Dan. Now, if Starship manages to make it all the way through re-entry, we'll collect valuable data on Starship flying through the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, meaning uh, more than five, or at this point, will be more than five times the speed of sound. Part of what you're also seeing is one of the cameras, this onboard view that we have, is on the end of a flap. Starship has front flaps and, and rear flaps in the vehicle. Um, so we've got four of those. And, oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Uh, now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are still... Views brought to you by Starlink. <laughs> yeah, the Starlinks are still communicating and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the, the biggest flying object ever in space. <laughs> absolutely, Kate. And, and it's important to note, with the ascent burn that we did was to get us to orbital velocities. Even though we were on a nearly orbital trajectory, so the heating and the loads that Starship is going through right now are what it would be getting if it were recovering from an orbital mission. And, and just the fact that we have views through entry, this is incredible. Yeah. 
again, this is the furthest and fastest that Starship has ever flown. And you can definitely tell by the, uh, the crowd here in Hawthorne. The heat shield tiles doing their work. We talked about it earlier. Uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat shield tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering atmosphere. Um, and so that's the purpose that they are serving during the hypersonic phase and then again during the subsonic phase. Absolutely. So like we said, these views are being provided by uh, a couple Starlink terminals that are, are positioned uh, on Starship itself. As that plasma builds, it, we're hoping that we can bring these views back to you. Uh, but you can see the telemetry there on the right-hand side of your screen.